everyone, this is One Man Zerg and SCV Rush. And we are casting a game of One Man Zerg and SCV Rush. And we are facing a two on two with, uh, it looks like, Mathematics and Bad Boy. And just a reminder, we're um, we're 2v2 Diamond Team, pretty highly ranked. We don't play enough, actually, to get ranked too, too much higher. But we do pretty well for ourselves. And we had uh, some interesting tactics in this game that we wanted to show you. Yeah, we're, we're playing on Tempest again. And... One, one thing we like to talk about is this is a four player map, you know, just some of the basic things of our opponent Zerg, Protoss. Just gonna fast forward it a little bit at the start. You'll see some pretty standard openings. I like to do a double extractor trick at 12 drones and then, um, and then move on from there. I just like the feel of it. I don't know if it's necessarily that much better. And then we'll see that bad boy over here, which we don't know yet, but he sent a drone over here. And so SCV Rush, as usual, is doing our scouting. I think scouting early for me is really important, especially for one man Zerg, because he gets to decide whether he wants to go for a macro build or or more defensive like a temple to stop a harassment or attack on our base. And we can see right now I was at 15 when I dropped a pool. I either drop it at 15 or 14, and then SCV rushed to the standard barracks on 11, right? 12. 12. And so then we see he gets in here, and this is a this is one of those vital points in the game. You know what's the guy doing? So he's scouted everything. You can see we've scouted all the creeps. We know there's nothing going on. So we know that that probably means a fast expand by this player. And then SCV Rush comes in and does scout that fast expand. So now we know we want to play more aggressively. Because if they get that expansion up, they're going to quickly gain an advantage in the game. You can also just uh, tell if the Zerg is expanding by looking at the number of drones. Usually he has about about 8 drones or ten, 9 drones. or yeah. Yeah, you, usually, I mean, my best indicator is that they don't have a spawning pool up. Or if they do have a spawning pool and you scout them several minutes later, they don't have that extractor working up as soon as they would usually because typically you get your spawning pool and you get your extractor at the same time or right about around each other. And then we scouted, did we scout this double gate? I think we did. No, we didn't scout the double gate, so we don't know what's up. But I'm deciding, okay, I'm going to go for speedlings and I'm going to try and get them pretty quickly because I want to leverage this um, map positioning. And what you'll see on Tempest is that's really difficult is that you have this joint D fence right here outside your ramp, and then you once again have a joint defense out in front of both your expansions, but it's very large, and you can get in and around it very quickly. So if he's defending over here, I can use this section to attack the Protoss, or I can go backdoor into the Zerg. And that's stuff that depending on what map you play you might want to do a different strategy so I like to on a map that has a more joint defense area maybe fast expand but on a map like Tempest I wouldn't want to fast expand as much. and then SCV Rush coming in here and just scouting that yeah they are putting up defense right here so we know that so we know that there's a big entrance to the Protoss base right now because it just defense is so far all to the right and you can see my strategy right here I get the speedling boost I'm going with massive speedling build so that I can get in there and harass them. And then SCV Rush is going pretty standard, but I think a little more aggressive early units than usual. Yeah, I, I was going to get a couple Marauders to uh, to to kind of be more aggressive on with, with your Zerglings. And you can see our opponents are actually doing something that's pretty smart. While one fast expands, the other goes very aggressive early troops to help defend it. That's a um, that's pretty common strategy. You want your strategies to, to complement each other. So like right. when SCV Rush and I play, it's usually I try and harass, then he tries to mass up and marches on him. So they compliment. So here's the first thing you'll see me do. I'm going to come in here with the, and speed links. with the speed links and just get some harass in there. And then you can see they're at uh, 23 right now, and then it's going to drop a little. And as much as I can, I want to avoid fighting these zealots, especially in, um, in limited areas like that, because these things really work best in the open. But by dancing this back and forth, I've burned a lot of mining time. Of this Protoss player. Yeah, 30 seconds at And then minimum. when I'm not in an optimal position, then I'm gonna take my Zerglings over here to the other base, take out that queen, that's really devastating, and then go and do some harassment on these zones as well. And the speedlings afford you that opportunity to do this. And then you can see my opponent doesn't have speedlings yet. Why? Because he fast expanded, and that's really gonna hamper him. And so just trying to play that off as much as possible, and then you can see SCV Rex over here is moving in with his troops. So now that I've harassed these opponents, sent them back a little bit, SCV Rush is able to come in 
with a little bit of a back on this because they know these spine callers because of the map once again because the tempest is very open and hard to defend they have to put him in this bad position back here from a frontal assault perspective and so SUV rush is able to do some damage here yeah so SUV is doing a very effective job of kiting and then getting his tank in there and you can see now this is another critical point in the game so let's uh let's rewind it just a little bit let's see if we can see so this is right pre-assault so i'm getting my zerglings i'm getting my speed upgrade and then we're going to play it and fast forward it and you can see right as i'm about to push in there's all my speed links so i know i'm about to attack right now my speed upgrade is almost complete i know that from here you can see so i tech to a layer and i expand because i know if i get my attack off appropriately then I will be able to gain an advantage and kind of turn the table on the Zerg player who did his fast expand. Because I want to be able to macro as much as he is doing in case I can't get my attack well, or if I do, then I turn an advantage. So, right, but you did a very good job, so you definitely got an advantage there, but an advantage and you hurt his economy a lot. And then SCD rush come in here. And so usually in two on twos, it's good to fight as a unit so two armies facing two armies or two armies facing one army but if you're going with some harass tactics like we are right now then that's not as necessary and so, so one flank attack one measure <laughs> goes in the back of their base and try to take yeah. the economy out here so usually you'd go me and scv rush push together but here we've gone with a harassment strategy strategy so scv rush can take this and we know both the armies because the zerglings just ran in on him and the, the Protoss army are here, are going for SCV rush. So I'm gonna once again back to her, and you're gonna see the opponents actually get a little mad at us <laughs> with this, um, kind of disappointed in their their own play maybe. And then we can see that, um, that you know, we just really, really messed up their harvester count. Yeah. So yeah, there, there they are. And it's hard to see that your base is under attack while you're attacking someone, because you know, they'll say your base is under attack, but you know that you're attacking someone. Yeah, so you're like, you already know, you know, you're under pressure, and so that, that is something that's really distracting. And then here we've really cut down the Protoss' income significantly, you know, put them at 3. And then the Zerg, although he still has a reasonable count of um, drones, you can see that he's only really working on one base, because the other base right. has been harassed. And then at the same time, you know, my tech is up, my spire is up, and if we can see the production, um... I'm actually going to start getting Mutilus pretty shortly. I know I'm going to do it. Really, I swear. They're starting to get some Mutilus. <laughs> and then SCV Rush is still... He's able to keep up this pressure on the front of the opponent's base. And so with that... Um, pause it and show you some stuff real quick. You can see they don't have scans, so they don't know what we're doing. They don't know if they I've expanded. No they don't know if he's going for Banshees or if he's going for Thors or whatever. So by keeping this constant pressure, you avoid getting scouted. And by avoiding being scouted you also make it so your next move is less predictable. And that's really going to keep the edge of the team. So SCV, as you can see, he's overwhelmed here, reasonably so, you know, it's 2v1. Um, but then that's quickly going to turn as soon as my, my mutilists come in. But I still need to produce units because they do have a significant ground army. Right, see, Nellis you, does pretty well against... If you look at this army perspective, army. it looks like the Protoss player, regardless of his economy being so hampered, still has the largest army remaining in the game so you know it's not like we can just kind of rest on our laurels if you will with our harassment earlier we have to you know keep up the pressure and then continue you know scv rush is macroing as well and then i think we're both trying to get more drones so you can see we are in the drone lead yeah, we're in the, we definitely have the economic advantage and the tech advantage but they still have a pretty decent sized army yeah and then we'll fast forward it so Backing off the harass a little bit, going with a more defensive posture now that we've established, you know, the, the macro advantage, the economic advantage, we really want to utilize that and leverage that. And then we know too, um, in game, because we're talking about it, that, you know, hey, I have some mutilists and I'm about to hit them. And they don't even know it's coming. And yeah, you know, once again, let's look at their scouting. They don't think it's coming. They're still massing ground troops because they think, oh, we're going to push out again soon and just devastate them, you know? and. That is, you know, that's a pretty common strategy, and it's because they haven't scouted us that they don't know what we're doing, and they don't know that, you know, you look at the army size, well, now I'm the largest, but that's only mutilus. That ground army size 
they're bigger. So, yeah, just bring in a significant amount of mutilus because they hadn't scouted it. And then they're pushing in the middle. But but they're not able to do anything with all this. And then, they, you know, they're just going to leave the game right there because, you know, they didn't have... Whoa, they didn't have all that scouting available, so they didn't know that the mutilists were going to hit them. Yeah, I felt I was very insignificant. I didn't really do anything. <laughs> I just I just kind of played along. But, it, you know, you did a, such a good job harassing that that I didn't have to do anything. Other than that, I think we both macroed up. If, even if that mutilist attack didn't go as well, if they scouted it, I think we would have still had a, such a strong macro advantage, we would have get the game, like, mid-game. Yeah, so you, you always, and I think to that point as you were just talking about how even if you have the advantage you don't want to just sit on that advantage so you need to keep developing what you're going to do next so we teched up so i teched to muta so that we'd have a tech advantage and then after that we would still have our macro advantage so if i wanted to switch to roach hydra and scv rush wanted to go mad ground we could do that you know we could switch out of this because we gain that economic advantage um as well as a tech advantage you know so you, you keep got having to take that next step to stay ahead in the game. Yeah, at this point, yeah. At this point, when you have the mutilus on them, there's nothing they can do, so, yeah. And then the established D, you know, they're not going to be able to uh, push in on that, even if they hadn't quit the game. So, yeah, so I hope you guys uh, took a few good lessons from that. You know, scout early, see what they're doing. Because of their fast expand, we decided to go with, you know, early harass. And then because we had the early harass and constant pressure on them, we decided to tech and then play defensive because we've established our macro game. So that was kind of the progression. And then a few little reminders. People always ask, you know, when do we expand? You expand when you're going to get in a good harass attack or a strong early push because they're unlikely to push back on you. You expand when you were about to attack, but instead of attacking, you just move out to that next right before point. you attack... You want to, you, you, right before you attack, you're going to move out with your troops, and your reinforcement troop won't get there in time anyway for a little while, so you might as well spend the money on a command center or a hatchery. And by the time your d attack is done, it, t it takes about 100 seconds, maybe, by the time you get to their base, your command center is done. So even if you got, if even if your fight was even with them, you still got an advantage for building that expansion. Exactly. And just, you know, remember, try to uh, spend those resources at all times, too throughout your game because then you're going to have the biggest army you can have at any given point yeah all right i think that's it um hope this guy hope this helps you guys in some 2v2 tactics as well as just thinking about how to strategically plan your game uh thanks for listening and subscribe to our channel appreciate that thanks cool later